if you notice on here, there's some real differences uh, in these ribs. And I, I'll start back over here with the, uh, the major, the whole rib here. And notice as we go forward in the animal, there's a substantial number of, of muscles just in this portion of the rib, not including all of those down here along the table that we know are going to come off. So there's a substantial number here. If we look on the back end of the cut, it's, major, it's, it's majorly one muscle there, which is the longissimus dorsi, or the ribeye muscle. So it's a big portion of that. As we get on the other end, it gets smaller, but there are other muscles that get larger. So we're going to see that in these cuts. So if we think about this in terms of the, the ribeye muscle uh, as it works through the beef rib, from the back side, it's going to be the largest it's going to be. A lot of times if we got a state from here, they'd say small end, but really it is the large, uh, largest portion of the ribeye muscle. So if you were looking for a prime rib that had mainly one muscle that would be extremely lean, this end might be the best for you to utilize. So here, this is the back end of the rib again, and this is the largest that you'll see the ribeye muscle or the longissimus dorsi muscle in here. So it's the leanest end of the rib in terms of solid muscle, lean cuts. As that muscle goes forward in the animal, it gets smaller. So we see that right in here as the, as the ribeye muscle itself. As it gets smaller, this muscle the spinalis dorsi muscle gets larger. And that's that muscle that has so much flavor, so tender, those kind of things as we look at it, it is a lot different. Now we pick up some other muscles as well, and you do see in between those some areas that have some fat in there that settles in between the muscles themselves. We call that for the most part seam fat. Some animals will have a tremendous amount of that. Some will have very uh, little. But if you're looking for something that's totally lean, this end of the rib's always going to have more seam fat than this end. Now they also can have fat down here on the end of the muscle that we call the tail. And so the butchers, for the most part, are going to trim this as best they can. But as that goes off, kind of off the side, that is an area where sometimes there's a good bit of fat associated with those. And so you can see it down here on the tail end of that, there being more fat. This one, uh, as we start to take out the ribeye, again, we're able to remove a lot of that seam fat from what we'd be using for prime rib. So it takes out some of it. At the same time, though, we're still going to have some areas that are going to have some seam fat in there uh, on the front end or the blade end of the, of the rib. Is, uh, as long as they're somewhat covered in fat thickness and in fat, there is, in my opinion, no real benefit to having a real thick layer of fat on the top of a prime rib. I know that over time we've changed our philosophy even on briskets and different cuts in that we don't have to have a tremendous amount of fat over the top, but you'd like to have, oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter of an inch of fat over there just to insulate, just to have some of that fat render into the meat and have that flavor become part of your beef uh, rib flavor as well.